Good morning. Today we are in Romans chapter 6, and the Apostle Paul asks two questions in this chapter. Both are related to um, our relationship with sin now that we are uh, a new creation, now that we have been raised with Christ. The first question was, are we to continue to sin that grace may abound? And then the second question in verse 15 was, are we to sin because we are not under law, but under grace? And so, so both of these have everything to do with both sin and grace. And so if God's a God of grace, then um, why don't we sin? If, if our sin makes his grace look better, then why not sin? He addresses that. And then um, if we're not under law, we're under grace, God doesn't hold us accountable for our sin, then why don't we sin? Um, and he handles that. And, and both times, the fundamental, the, the fundamental issue is our relationship with sin now that we are a new creation in Christ. Um, so those questions, um, in, in some way, demonstrate that you don't get it. Uh, but at the same time, what Paul is arguing here is that you are a new creation in Christ, that before you knew Christ, sin was your master. Sin reigned over your life. You were a person who followed um, sin's desires. And yet, when you became a, a believer and you were um, you were raised with Christ as a new creation. You actually died to sin, um, which, of course, baptism symbolizes. But it's this picture of I'm, I'm dead to sin. I'm alive. But there's also a, another picture that Paul uses here that um, that you were a slave to sin, and now you, you've been set free um, and through the blood of Christ. You were redeemed, right? And um, now you have a new master. It's not that we were just set free to be on our own. I mean, really, you're you're slave to either sin or you're slave to God. Um, there is no, I'm free to be me and do what I want to, because that's exactly what sin wants you to do. So if that's what your attitude is, you're still slave to sin. Um, and and so uh, this is the what picture of what's going on. Here, I highlighted two verses this morning. Uh, verse 12 says, Let not sin reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. And then verse 22 says, But now you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God. And I just want to talk about um, that for a minute. Having been united with Christ, it reminds me that I am under new ownership. And that while I am set free, that is true, I have been set free, I am still um, under a master, a new master. But this master is a benevolent master, it's a life-giving master. To obey this master actually is life-giving. Uh, it does not bring uh, death. And, and so um, the application that, for me anyway, what I journaled was um, don't give sin reigning power over your soul. Let not sin reign in your mortal body. Um, and the reason is that uh, it is no longer in control. And so don't give in to its demands. Um, instead, present yourself to God to obey slash pursue righteousness and uh, understand that God is our new master. Um, and as I was processing this and in, in just asking God, what, is, what does this look like practically in my life? Um, because we all know that sin still has significant influence over our lives. It's not our master anymore, but sometimes we treat it like it is. Um, sometimes we just give in to its desires so quickly and so easily. Uh, we treat it as if it is still our master. And, and so in my response, I said, uh, 
Um, when tempted today, I will literally tell my old master, I don't belong to you anymore. I don't belong to you anymore. I have been bought with a price. So I will honor my savior um, and my new master with my body. You are no longer my master. And I would encourage you to, as you, as you process Romans chapter six and your relationship to sin, to understand that, that sin no longer um, is your master. You don't have to give into it. Um, don't treat it. Don't give it reigning power in your life. Um, you're under new ownership. And praise God for that. Let's thank God for that. Father, you sent your son Jesus to come and die on a cross to redeem us. He bought us back to you. Father, we were under the slave ownership of sin in our lives, and it reigned over our uh, bodies. But that is no longer true because of the death of Jesus. Father, we are now believers in the Lord Jesus, and we have been transformed. We have been brought from death to life. We, uh, Father, have, have been raised with Christ. And so, Father, we do have a new owner, and you are our slave master. And, Father, you call us to pursue your righteousness. You call us to be uh, obedient to you, um, not for some kind of exercise in control, but actually you give us life through obedience and a pursuit of righteousness. And so, God, I pray that and when we are tempted today, that we would not only be reminded of that truth, that you give us life and pursuing righteousness is worth it, but Father, you would help us to look our old master right in the eye and um, let him know that he no longer is our master. He no longer owns us. He no longer has reigning power over our lives. Thanks be to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessings.